Well, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we had connected, I guess, about a month ago. Um, you guys had reached out on LinkedIn after I had said, Hey, we're doing this podcast and said, check out this YouTube link. Right. And so I jumped onto YouTube and, uh, saw a pretty cool, I guess, XR VR, uh, augmented reality, uh, walkthrough of troubleshooting on an aircraft. And I said, okay, we definitely gotta, <laughs> we definitely gotta talk. So, uh, here with me today, I have Sean, Doug, thanks for, thanks for joining me. Thank Glad you. To be here. Yeah. So, um, I, I think, you know, we, we've been talking on this show and, and I told you, you know, I've been having a lot of conversations around workforce development and some of the things that are, are going on in aviation. And I think what, what you guys are working on is a really, uh, really advanced, uh, solution to some of the problems that we're seeing in aviation. And so, um, maybe we could just start with a quick intro into who you guys are. I know you have kind of different, uh, different paths, but now you guys are coming together, um, to solve a really, um, complex problem in aviation. So, uh, Sean, you want to, you want to get started? Yeah, absolutely. My name is, uh, Sean Galligan. Um, CEO of Aviation Workforce Solutions, been in aviation for several decades, operated several Part 147 schools and maintenance programs, love aviation, um, got two boys that are a &P mechanics, both are doing fantastic, and I've been working in workforce development um, for the last few years, specifically on uh, uh, at, with my own company. And what we've seen is the demand for skilled workers, skilled workforce is huge. It's been huge for a long time, and there is no cutting back on it. And what we've discovered is that, you know, you need to be innovative. you got to sure. do things differently. You do the same thing like you did before, expect the same results. So we're looking at changing that, and that's where I met up with Douglas. And we thought, you know, there's, there is ways to um, build a better mousetrap, believe it or not. Um, that, you know, they say you can't do it. I think we can. And I think <laughs> we have. And I think we've got a better mousetrap um, coming down the pike on how to um, fill that skills work yeah. gap. Um, and we're excited about it. Yep. Uh, so my name is Douglas Fajardo. Um, I started Senial Digital about three and a half years ago. We actually split from a global uh, marketing digital group uh, called WPP, the biggest conglomerate of advertising, marketing, and digital agencies in the world. And we were already doing a lot of like um, digital transformation of education, learning, yeah. and uh, and training. Uh, into more like mobile experiences mm -hmm. and we just saw the potential of virtual reality and augmented reality to elevate that experience and, and bring a more relevant way of learning to these young people that, you know, that we want to impact both, you know, in, in high schools as well as, as in higher education. And of course now working with Sean also work, you know, the workforce out there. So we're just really excited about the potential of these technologies, especially in the aviation space. Sure. And so, you know, I, I, I just took a quick, uh, quick look at some of the technology and we're going to circle back to that and, and look at some of the stuff that you guys have been doing. Um, but tell me, like, talk to me about, okay, you, you've, you've had this, this past history in augmented reality and virtual reality, I guess now that's called XR, right? And so uh, you have a, a long history in the aviation space and you've been really focused on workforce development. So tell me how, you know, how are you guys coming together and how are you looking at um, this problem of workforce development? How are you bringing this technology together to, to really solve it? Yeah, um, you know, in doing training, it requires lots of hands-on um, training with lots of expensive stuff. There is right. nothing in aviation is, that is cheap or easy to come by. Um, I've worked with a number of public schools, and it's hard for us to get, you know, a PT-6 engines donated to us or working aircraft or working engines. Those things are just very difficult for us to get. They take up a lot of space. They're only used at certain times. Right. Um, so there's got to be a better way to do that. You can actually have a PT-6 cutaway. You know, it doesn't take up any space. It is a headset on we can sit there and simulate a lot of the maintenance that training that needs to be done so that when the students, they build that muscle memory and then they can actually go and then do the physical training or the physical tangible um, 
uh, assessment of those skills. And that's where Douglas comes in. The platform that they've developed will build that virtual environment. And as a previous school administrator, what was really important for me was not just that experience, but how do I measure um, the, the students' abilities on it? Did they do it correctly? Did they do it correctly the first time? How long did it take them to do it? All those data points was something that was extremely important to me as a school administrator. And that's what Douglas's platform will do. It actually captures all that data. You want to explain that? Yeah, yeah. so I think um, <clears throat> the first thing is, I think to Sean's point, right, we, the, the, the technology brings a, like a lot of really important benefits for this organization. So mm -hmm. first is you no longer are tied to a physical space or physical objects to be able to train these kids, right? So scalability is the other piece that comes with that. Right? If you buy an engine at a school of aviation, you can only have one or two kids working on it at a time. Now you can have a hundred kids with a virtual reality headset working each with their own engine, right? So sure. I think that's interesting, the scalability, the cost of not having to replace or the risk of damaging something that's very expensive, uh, it's another benefit. And uh, so to Sean's point, I, I just think that's really what the technology is doing from a workforce development. And that's what we bring to the table. And in terms of the platform, like Sean mentioned, that's what we find now where we're differentiating ourselves uh, from other companies that are doing virtual reality content is the ability to bring a full enterprise level platform, mm -hmm. but not only can we deliver uh, a great experience uh, from an interactive uh, uh, methodology of learning, but we can also capture all the data, not only around the student's performance, but also around the content and how the content is being used. I think Sean was alluding uh, before we started uh, this conversation around uh, how we're heading into adaptive learning, which is how do we create environments where we adapt to the way each kid or each student or each person learns sure. instead of just having it like, I'm just going to teach the same thing to all this uh, group of people that learn in different ways. So we feel the best way is to actually create these learning, adaptive learning environments that are that adapt to each kid. And then capturing all this data allows us to enhance the content and to make it a more customized learning experience for each person. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, when you talk about, you know, catering to each individual student, you're talking about, you know, the speed, their, their expertise level, um, how comfortable they are with a specific piece of equipment. And that's not something that is, you're not, not necessarily, um, in a, in a traditional, classroom you're not getting that type of experience right correct yeah correct currently in a part 147 school you typically have with 25 students in a lab um, basically that's the limit that you can have in that environment right um so you're limited to the number of people on an engine and then you know most schools they still have old they still were you know what we have is jt8s right old continentals old vicomings <laughs> you know it's just older stuff with vr we could have the latest rolls engine we could be working on a global we could be working on a challenger. You know, those are things that you're not going to find that, that students don't have access to or the ability to look at. Or, you know, that virtual field trip where we can go to a, a Bombardier service center and look at a hangar and see what it's like to work at Bombardier. Or at another FBO or another OEM or another um, uh, Part 145. Those things are just amazing opportunities. And it's going to break the paradigm of how we teach. There's no more of the rows and columns in a classroom. Now we can open it up to differentiated learning. You got students that learn at different paces at different speeds. You've got a new 147 regulations that are coming out that'll be a lot more competency-based than time-based. And that's gonna open up the whole world of how education, training technically for uh, technicians on, a, on aircraft is gonna be done. And I think that what, um, what Douglas is doing um, with Zenial Digital and the aircraft maintenance programs that there's, that's being designed, that's going to be a new way of doing it, a, a, a more efficient way of doing it, a way that can actually, you know, uh, uh, employers can come in and see, you know, these students have mastered these tasks. And here is the report that says, you know, task one, task two, task three, task four, he mastered it, he mastered it, he didn't master it, he went back and mastered it and mastered it and mastered it. And it's not just for the 147s, it's even for Part 65 training programs sure. or any type of short-term training programs. You know, people need sheet metal technicians. You can put them to a VR sheet metal, then test that memory muscle in real life and get it done. 
sort of opportunities and not only a program, which is, you know, a degree or a certificate, but micro credentials, you know, short industry certificates. That's where this type of system really glows. Yeah. And so just backing up a step, like talk to me, like I, I just tested this out. We're going to, we're going to walk through it in, in just a bit, but what is that, what does that VR experience look like? Can you describe what that looks like for somebody that's going to work on an engine? Like, you know, um, what, what are the steps that they're going through and what are they actually seeing? And we also talked a little bit about what they may be able to feel and uh and and actually feel and maybe even smell in the future so, well we'll see maybe yeah. that's a little bit further out <laughs> there's right? some studies that are interesting around that last point that i'll, that I'll talk a little yeah. bit about but the, the experience is really like when you think about it right sean was mentioning let's put a school of aviation as a as, a, as an example so you know you're close to probably some kind of small airport where you are, have access to a hangar and what you have there is all equipment, all Cessnas and things of that nature, right? But mm -hmm. that's all you can do there. In virtual reality, you can actually be at home with your VR headset and you, we put you in a hangar in there and you have a multi-aircraft experience. So you can switch from an A320 to a 737 to a Cessna and then be assigned a set of tasks. There can be electrical tasks. They can be, um, you know, just familiarization around the, the aircraft. Uh, you know, finding how to change a tire or things of that nature. So I think that's what's so interesting that, you know, you have the capability now to be at home or wherever you are. You can be in a hotel, yeah, sure. you can be wherever, even you can be on a plane going somewhere inside a hangar, right? <laughs> so I, I think that's the beauty of this technology. So that's the experience that, 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 you know, somebody gets. And then inside of there, you get modules, want to practice. So you have like a virtual uh, advisor that's telling you, all right, we're going to replace a tire. And then that virtual advisor is going to tell you, all right, this is the first step. This is the second step. So you create memory muscle, like Sean was mentioning before, about all the right steps to change that tire. And mm -hmm. then we have the assessment module, which is where you are assigned a task, like go change a tire, have to do it on your own, and then we capture all the that you did that process correctly. So that's really the process that you go through. I think the beauty, as you were mentioning, of where the technology is going, is all these new accessories, such as, uh, they're called haptic gloves. Basically, they're gloves with sensors that allow you to actually feel objects that are virtual in these VR environments. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to be able to feel, you know, the weight of something or the consistency or the elasticity of something. So the technology is really evolving to, to that place where, you know, somebody's going to know how to, you know, what type of wrench and what does that feel to get that or a screwdriver and, you know, how do you screw it? And then when you break it, the click and the sensory experience of, of breaking something like that. And I, I think in the future, mm -hmm. I, I think smell is probably the most challenging thing because, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know how many billions yeah, different types smells. of smells. <laughs> I heard that um, I haven't researched, so I'm just going to talk a little bit of, but I think there is some studies going on around how through actually um, like hearing like certain sounds can trigger a smell, can trick your brain into figuring out a smell. And I think that might be the only <laughs> way in which you can probably do it on VR because the way you smell yeah. a steak and I smell a steak are totally yeah. different, right? So, <laughs> so I think uh, that's going to be probably a more challenging thing. But uh, but I think where the technology is going is pretty is pretty incredible. Yeah, that's. I mean, it, it's really cool. I got a sneak peek at it. Just being able to go in and immerse yourself in these different spaces. Um, I've never seen anything like that before. And actually it was the first time I've had the experience of just VR in general. Um, but we were talking a little bit about really like the next generation is coming up with, you know, very kind of comfortable in these VR spaces. And so, you know, we were talking about my, my kids were, are on their iPad probably more than, more than I'd like, but they're, li they, they play this game Roblox and it's, it's like a virtual reality world. And, you know, you were talking about your, uh, your son and coming up through, you know, creating one to get into gaming and creating uh, VR. So it seems like it's, it's becoming much more um, mainstream and acceptable, both in just like 
entertainment, but in in the way of education. Yeah, I think gaming kind of like always leads the way. You know, yeah. when you think about like you know, I mean, we we're, we're on the on the on the way here. We're talking about uh, you know, I mean, my first gaming console was an Atari, right? Yeah. And from Atari to Fortnite, or you know, or to the PlayStation games that these guys play now, yeah. it's so different. And you know, you get to build you know things in teams and you get to create all these collaborative ways of actually playing games and things like that so you're now that that's going into the gaming economy now mm -hmm. right where kids are going to start making money by playing games and of course there is all these youtube stars that are just putting their videos out there and making millions just showing how strategies for gaming right so it's really interesting so i think the beauty about that is that all the kids that are you know that are grew up on the iPhones, on the iPads, and all these interactive experiences, they, they're seeing VR as that next version of it, right? And I think sure. uh, what, what we're finding exciting is that, uh, especially it's starting on the high school and higher ed, where we're seeing the higher amount of adoption of VR and AR. And, and those are the future professionals. And those are the guys that are going to go build companies, startups, and or that are going to go into companies and transform the way people interact. Uh, you know, I mean, you got a sneak peek, you know, the way you yeah. were in the same virtual reality hangar with my CTO in Colombia, right? That's yeah. crazy, right? <laughs> That's the way people are, you know, Facebook is going full into, into a meta, what they call the metaverse world. So they're creating uh, virtual reality spaces where my team is now meeting to do, uh, you know, virtual virtual reality sessions on on the stuff that we're gonna do for the week, for the month. Sure. And now everything we test, we test in virtual reality. We go into the hangar with everybody, and we're saying, "All right, this is wrong, this is right." You know, make these adjustments, and it's all within the VR environment. So I think that's what's exciting is the, the these generations that are starting with VR now they're the ones that are gonna take it to another level. In the next five to 10 years, we're gonna see an incredible amount of just uh, evolution in, in this space, right? Yeah. So it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty exciting, yeah. And so how do you actually, you know, I was looking at it, it's pretty amazing the, you know, going in and the, every, like it's all to scale, it's laid out exactly like as you were in the aircraft or in the hangar, how do you, what? Talk to me a little bit about the technology that's behind that. How do you actually get these aircraft or engines or components built into this uh, VR world? So in some cases, there, there is quite a few libraries of 3D objects mm -hmm. where they will sell you, let's say, just the shell of a 737, right? Yeah. So a figure is like, I compare it to like when you go to a mall and then you go into these places where you paint like, objects and things like that. They just give you a little white object and your kids yeah. <laughs> do stuff. That's it, kind of like the same thing that's happening now where we get all these shells and then we're able to use these 3D models and then we program everything into it, right? From, let's say, opening a door, or in this case, going into the cockpit and being able to put the tags on the dashboards or wherever they need to go right into so so there is a lot of assets like that and sometimes they just don't exist right, right. Not, not not everything exists so we actually have to create it from scratch and the way we do that usually is by uh, recording via video or even photographing environments mm -hmm. or objects and then we put them through a software program uh, process called photogrammetry where we can actually take uh, a picture or a video of something and then convert it into a usable uh, 3D object. So that's the way we do it. And of course, there is, um, you know, like a, a leading uh, software programs, uh, Unity 3D is one of them, and Unreal Engine, those are the two top two game design engines. Mm -hmm. So they were developed for game design, but yeah. now companies like ours are using it to develop, uh, you know, virtual reality learning training uh, simulators. Sure. And so aviation is what you guys are focused on right now. And, but you've had experience and this is, this is proven technology in some other spaces. So yep. you know, we were talking a little bit about how it's used in classrooms. Can you walk me through, you know, some of the, the scenarios that you've, you've used it in? Yeah. So I, I think, um, I mean, 
when we started, we, we, we started testing quite a bit in terms of how we could migrate physical STEM labs at high school. So chemistry, physics, biology. Right. That's where we started testing some of that. So we created that. We created some chemistry labs, biology labs, and things of that nature. But I think where it's exciting right now, uh, so aviation is one of our, our, our main areas of focus. We have two, actually, is healthcare and aviation. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the perfect examples is uh, the work that we're doing with the University of Miami, where we're actually creating operation operating rooms uh, where nurses are training how to anesthetize and how to uh, work with anesthesia equipment in virtual reality instead of actually having a simulation lab. Sure. A simulation lab costs upwards of $750,000 with all the equipment and all the mannequins and everything that you need to build, yeah. and they're constrained spaces. Uh, so now we're building, uh, you know, these type of experiences in virtual reality. So we've 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 done quite a bit of work in the last five years uh, with different industries. We built a full cement plant uh, to to do uh, high risk uh, training procedures for the operators that that uh, that work on those cement plants. Aviation. We've actually one of the highest impact. Um, uh, virtual reality training experiences that we built was, uh, I'm originally from Guatemala, mm -hmm. so we actually work in the highlands of Guatemala with farmers, uh, indigenous farmers, Mayan farmers, and we build a virtual reality experience for them to build irrigation systems out of rainwater uh, in VR. So it was such a, <laughs> this clash of like, you know, this culture of farming with this technology, but the impact was incredible. These guys learned how to actually uh, recuperate some of their dead lands through these strategies that we showed them how to how to do in virtual reality. So, and then that was the first actual experience in the entire planet that was built in three Mayan languages plus Spanish. So, uh, it was interesting to actually build a multi-language experience with yeah. people that sometimes are even illiterate. To tell yeah. the truth, but we were replicating the way they they learn, which is by watching, by doing, and by listening. Right, right? and uh, and that's really if we can impact those type of uh, communities. Uh, imagine you know these guys that are already so used to sure. working with digital experiences every day. Right? Yeah, so. it's I mean incredible, incredible stuff, right? Um, and so as, as I always look at. Know, the the aviation space and you know, trying to get people into aviation and get them trained and uh, and up to speed, you know, there the the access to actually you know work on an aircraft or see an aircraft or get into a hangar or or you know listen and and talk with somebody who has twenty years of experience, it's somewhat limited, right? And for, for most of the population, I, I don't think they know wh where to get started, right? And so that's what I think is really exciting about this technology is that you have the capability of getting this into the hands of somebody in the middle of nowhere who doesn't have that access and, and, um, and really getting them started. And so how are you guys going about... I you know I think we had talked about you know you're starting to work with uh, with universities and things. So how what what's like the I guess the business model behind this? Who are you trying to get this technology um, to, and where how how is that going for you? Um, I think one of the natural things is in the technology in the technical space is those Part 147 um, schools, yeah, um, the AMTSs. Um, as well as, you know, high schools that are trying to start um, initial programs. And I think a lot of this has to do with starting at an early age, trying to get students identified as, as a career path. Um, and ver VR is the easiest way to get into a high school. It could be the high school in a high-density area or in a very rural area. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about VR, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in the, in the middle of nowhere or in downtown Miami, and you can get that ex same experience. So you can, you know, and we don't have to make, the teacher don't have to be the master of all knowledge. Right. They can put those headsets on, they can get into an area. Like you said, I mean, trying to get onto MIA, Miami International Airport, you, you don't, Impossible. You don't yeah. do that anymore. That doesn't happen. <laughs> but in a VR, you can. Right. You can go to, you know, Punta Gorda Airport and be here, right. you know, and do it. It doesn't really matter. We can be anywhere. 
And now we don't know the instructors and people don't have to be to know all that information because you're going to have that mentor that's going to be with you in that VR experience. And the beautiful thing that we're doing in this VR experience is that you can have an instructor to be an avatar with a class of another 20, 30, 100 people in the same virtual reality space. And that's going to, that's making a huge difference. So those high school students could now get experience to it. And now they, they've learned about it. This is what they want to do. And then the natural articulation will be them from a high school to a, a technical program to teach the training. So they can get to a part 147 and now that 147 can have VR and now they can teach them on what is needed in their local area. You know, in a area that has a lot of business jets, well, then we have we can actually now specify business jets as part of that in a virtual environment. Right. If they're down more in Miami area where you need more commercial aircraft, well, then we can look at the A320s, we can look at the 737s as part of it. So we can really differentiate the type of instruction to the locations and where those students are going to be trained and where they're going to be working at. Yeah. Um, so that it's it offers the school total flexibility. It offers the best opportunity for those students. And it's also meeting the, the workforce demands and needs of those areas of those companies that are looking for people that are trained on, you know, on a challenger as opposed to an A320. Right. You know, some places, okay, A3, we, we don't have no A320s, you know, here in the middle of nowhere. We have a, a lot of Cessnas and Pipers. We, that's what we need. So with a click of a button, now you're in a hangar with a Cessna. Yeah. Down and- a, and the cost, you know, we were talking a little bit about the cost of actually buying equipment, whether it's, I mean, most schools don't have new equipment. They have, you know, um, older equipment, it's out of date, um, but still extremely expensive. So what, what, what are we looking at in regards to cost? Um, a lot less than buying yeah. that new. I can tell you that right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, you can buy a bolt that costs more than a, an air. You know, it's yeah, just outrageous. Sure. Well, you were even saying like those the headset just to get into those environments is now somewhere in the range of like two to three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's two ninety nine plus tax. You get yeah. three twenty five, yeah. <laughs> and you're getting a, a headset that uh, that that has all the capabilities that you want. Of course, there's headsets that are you know five thousand dollars, if not more, that are you know, super high quality, but I think right now you were talking about the targets. Our initial targets are, you know, technical schools, schools of aviation, yeah. high school programs. Um, we're definitely see, seeing a roadmap where we're going to also, uh, you know, work with MROs, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully some airline training uh, programs as well. And then we, we also won a grant uh, a few months ago with the Air Force, uh, with AFWERKS, uh, to build um, a few training modules for some of the uh, aircraft uh, for the Air Force. So I think there is going to be probably some opportunities within DOD to, sure. to, to build some stuff there. So I, I, there is quite a bit of uh, potential uh, target customers. Uh, but, but right now, I think we're going after the low-hanging fruit, which are the technical schools and, and the high school programs. And we're seeing really, really good traction so far. Sure. That's really cool. And as you had mentioned something earlier about some possible changes in regulation, because I know that, you know, you get this muscle memory that we're talking about, right. about working on these aircraft. And, and I think that the, this VR world brings a lot more, um, you have the ability to scale a lot better when you're looking at these schools, because you can have 25 kids working on the same thing at one time at their own pace and, and, and whatever, as, as we talked about. Um, but, uh, as you look at like the future of this, um, I lost my train of thought here. As the I, comp- as the, I, I think the, where it's going is compet- competency based training. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. So, you know, as, as you, as you're looking at this, you know, the, the FAA really only recognize hands-on training of working on an aircraft, signing off those tasks. So how does how does this look in the future with uh, with bringing this technology into it? Well, right now it's hour based training. Yeah, I mean, you got to have so many hours. You got to have so many tasks that are completed. Um, the FAA still is going to monitor what's going to be the new ACS standards, mm-hmm. and we can build all of our platform around those ACS standards. Um, but it's going to be competency based, and there's yeah. a, there's a little bit more flexibility on on how that's going to how the curriculum is going to be designed and and monitored by um, the school's curriculum, um, accreditation body. Okay. So we got, there's going to be that much more flexibility in doing it. 
it's going and that's going to make a big difference on how we do the education you know again you, you know you got students that do you know you get the bubble yeah right? sure. you get those kids that are you know the, the the ones that kill it and you got the guys that are just you know kind of doing their thing and you get the ones that are a little bit behind it need a little bit more work vr will come in through that and and kind of equalize it yeah. and that way that the ones that are going fast they're given a little bit more challenging um task but it's still meeting the requirements of the ACS standards and the FA requirements. The middle group is still meeting all the requirements and the ones that are struggling, they're getting remedial service through the, the program because it's going to monitor them. And if they're falling behind, it's going to give them remedial to get them up to level so that they meet those standards. And it's just a better way for a school to know that when those students go to take their written, their roles and their practicals, that they're ready for it. Mm -hmm. They can actually simulate the practical examinations. You know, you're going to have to go there. You're going to have to time a mag. Right, we can do that in a virtual environment. Right. We can know you got it right. You know, if you're going to have to do safety wiring, we could simulate that. One of the neat things when those NAPTIC gloves come out, because I one of my favorite ones is you know torque wrenches. You know, they sit there and they got to torque it, but you know it, it's hard to do that in a virtual environment because really a lot of that is feel because you got to feel that click. Right, right. With the NAPTIC gloves, you're going to be able to feel the click. You'll hear the click. You'll you'll sense it. That's going to be a really interesting. Um, as well as, you know, I, I, again, it's, you know, what we can also build for those high school students to get those skills. And a lot of companies, you know, they, they, they want that AMP. They want that airframe and power plant technician, but they also need just some skilled workers. Yeah, sure. You know, that short-term training programs that, you know, they know lefty loosey, righty tidy. They can measure. They know how to do the basic skills. They, they, ha they know the terminology of aviation. They know how to fill out forms. They know how to do tags. All that can be done to teach a short-term program in order to meet a current immediate need. And then they can go on into a regular training program, you know, into a certificate program or into a college or university and get those degrees. But it's, it's great for economic development for area. It's great for upskill training of current people in that area. And I think it's just going to be an amazing opportunity um, to really change how um, education is done. And it's going to make it much more efficient. And it's going to be better, f you know, you, you, some people go to school for two, four years, they graduate and they go, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not for me. Yeah. Well that, you know, that really kind of stinks. Um, especially if they got a, a huge debt load on top of that. Right. And they, they're, they're, they're tied, put them in a VR. They know what they're going to be getting into. Right. You know, they, they're, know they're going to have to walk into a hangar, although they may not be able to smell the smell of jet fuel in the morning, <laughs> which is going to be very you know hard on me. Cause I, you know, that, that's yeah. kind of your bread and butter of your, if you live in aviation, but at least they, they, they can see it. They're going to they're gonna know what it's like. You know, we have opportunities, you know, they can, we can put them inside of a tug and they can pull planes around because there's a, there's a huge need for line service techs. Yeah, sure. You know, and repair people and, and helpers. And we can build all that into, and we're looking at building a whole airport environment um, where they can go there and they can, you know, you got the hangar, you got the airplane, you got the ramp, you got AOA. We can deal with security with SIDA badges. I mean, we could build a whole environment, a whole ecosystem of an airport where it's not just the mechanics. It is just, the, it's the line service techs. It's, it's the customer service. It could be security. It could be, you know, whether or not, you know, you know, you're walking through a hangar and you see FOD, do you pick it up or not? Yeah. So now it's human factors training. I mean, the amount of stuff that can be done in VR is just, it's, it's amazing. And there's so many ways that it can be implemented. Um, for fast track training, training programs, it can be done at community centers. It can be done at a museum of science. It can be done in the high school. Um, it can be done in an adult center. Um, it's just a great way to open up new opportunities to people that they're just not aware of. Yeah, sure. That's awesome. And, and you know, typically when we're talking about software or training programs, you know, the, one of the, one of the common questions I think that's asked is, okay, well, this looks awesome. How long does it take to get this set up? And so if you wanted to create a tra training program at a technical school or in a high school, you know, what are you looking at in regards to like turnaround time? I guess it probably the answer is it depends on yeah. how complex of a, of an environment, but, um, you know, what, what, what does a typical like creation look like? So uh, our, right now it takes between like two, between three to five months to okay. build a really solid module, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, it, that's what it took us to build right now, a hangar with a 737, a cockpit, and the avionics compartment. And then the exercises or the skills that they have to learn there, they, that those we can build three weeks, four weeks. So we're adding new skills to this 
environments more and more. I think the implementation for the schools is pretty easy. I mean, you know, it's like delivering an app through an through a phone, right? right? That's what we're doing. We're delivering an app except through a headset, uh, a VR headset device. So the, the implementation time is pretty quickly. I think what we're going to see is that in the next two to four years, as Sean was mentioning, as we build this vision of a full virtual reality airport where you can be training all these different kind of uh, of, of professionals, uh, we're going to have ready-made uh, modules, uh, training modules. So it's going to be easier for uh, a school or a company to select, all right, I want to, you know, do this, buy or purchase these modules, right. and this is what I want to implement. So I think, like anything, right, we're, we're in the really, really early stages of, of, um, of, of the, in this industry and how it's going to be adopted, adopted and, and the products that we're building. So I think as we build more products, it's going to be like that. It's going to become an app store with a lot of different, you know, VR uh, training simulators. Yeah. And it's going to be a, a lot faster to implement. But in the meantime, is that is right now we're in the ramp up phase where we're just building, building, building in order to have a richer set of products to bring to the market. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah it's exciting stuff. Yep. Maybe we uh, take a take a look at the headset now yeah. and and uh, see what it's all about. Yeah, nothing like experience. Yeah, man. so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll give that a shot. Okay, cool. So right now you're inside the hangar. Yep, in the hangar. Hey, Boris, how are you? I'm doing well. Cool. So we're gonna we're gonna look at a safety checklist here before we get started. Okay. So ATC transponder. The light is on off. Transponder failure. Antenna failure. Altitude failure. Control data failure or loss of the GPS signal. Please check the breakers. Refer to the more info tab on your tablet for breaker details. If the breakers are out, push them in and check to see if the light goes off. So we're checking the breakers. Yeah. If the breakers are in and the pump light is still on, you will need to run a bike test. Please proceed to the ADO. <laughs> I think the table's in my way. <laughs> okay, you do it for me. I guess ideally you'd want to be in a nice open space. Here. Yeah, it's in the stationary. You're a little bit more limited. All right, so we're going to add safety tags over on these breakers here. Very cool. Back to the avionics compartment. Yeah, don't push. Oh, there we go. Pulling it out. Okay. So I'm going to come back and pull these tags out here. Throw it. <laughs> Very cool. Throw it over there. Okay. Push those back in. That over there, and then we'll push that in there. Avionics compartment to run the bike test. Okay. The light is green. Pull it up. Push the detectors off. You're a master technician. Light is <laughs> off. Awesome. So job job done, and yeah, basically I'm. Um, you're a oh, technician for a 737 now. <laughs> You're ready to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you, Boris. I appreciate it. It was awesome. No, very cool. You know, I'm in here and I'm actually getting a feel for like what this space actually looks like. Um, so let me, let me pop.
pop this off. Yeah. And back to the real world you are. Yeah, back to the real world. Um, so that was really cool. Now you're actually looking at everything as it would be inside of a 737 yeah. cockpit. And, uh, and getting in there, looking at those breaker panels, applying those tags, going back and forth, going through the motions of actually troubleshooting a real task. Yeah, yeah it's pretty absolutely. sweet. Yeah, no, I think I think, and I think you know, a couple of the things that I, th that you know, I love where the technology is going is like I mentioned. I mean, you are inside this virtual reality. You're inside a hangar with a seven three seven here in this little right. small <laughs> of you know what I'm saying. So it blows your mind where it can get the earth pieces, the real time instruction, no matter where you are. So right. think about you know a professor being in their home and being able to teach, you know, 20, 30 kids across the country, across the world, right? right. So that's a really, really powerful thing. And the fact that w because you're doing it, you remember, you know, all these experiences better than if you were just watching a video and you're dozing off watching videos yeah, or sure. you're just pushing clicks on a, on a computer, right? One of the interesting things is with the, with the instructor being in there is consistency of instruction. Really, a lot of times, you, you know, you go to a school and they go, oh, we want this instructor or we want that instructor because right. people don't know, right? So the same thing with training departments um, at MROs. You know, you got stations all across the country, but different training, you know, levels at different ones. With this, you could have, you know, the the headsets at all the different training centers and one instructor training everyone the exact same way right. across your whole network. Or if you're a school across multiple campuses. So you get really good quality of instruction that is consistent across all those different ones and you could have that that subject matter expert that guy or that gal be the one that teaches everyone this subject right and then you get the next instructor comes in that's that that's their thing and they can teach it so it's mastery you know by the best across the whole yeah. country or a whole campus or a whole county it's, it's solving a couple of problems too because like you can get more students but you can also you the you, you don't need as many professors, right? Mm -hmm. In some ways, because you're able to yeah. connect with more people um, and have, you know, one person, like you said, that's responsible for a particular right. uh, class or course or, or whatever. Well, just imagine, you know, class, let's say the, the, the class is over with today. You still got the headsets. Yeah. And like, that means you could go home and go through it again on your own. Right. And, and again, and again. Yeah. So yeah. you could really sit there and say, you know what? I'll, you, you got it. Normally in the day you walk away, you leave whatever training resources are at the school. When you leave, you no longer have access to those resources. Right now you're literally bringing us, you know, a seven three seven home. How cool is that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's really neat, and it's uh, it's just yeah, it doesn't even seem real, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is it's just crazy how uh, how far technology has come in just a short period of time. Right, a couple of years ago. This wasn't yeah no it wasn't and, really possible no especially because a lot of the headsets um, you had first of all the good headsets uh, were a lot more expensive than these yeah. ones and you needed a computer to get the real quality that you're getting now with these standalone devices right. so even the investment before it was twenty five hundred three thousand dollars for you to have this experience at home. Now it's 300 bucks. So the technology is getting there and the quality, I think the initial versions uh, had a little bit more issues in terms of lag, you know, and right. you, of course we wanna, you know, like experience this in real time. Yeah. And it was causing issues of, you know, people just getting a little bit lightheaded or whatever. Uh, but with now with the quality of these devices now, I mean, you experienced it. I mean, it's, you're, you're moving and you're seeing things in real time. Yeah. You're communicating yeah. in real time, <laughs> right? So I think, I think uh, and the technology is going to keep evolving. These things are going to get lighter, better, more powerful, yeah. and more real. Like, you know, the chipsets and the graphics are going to get more real. Like I said, you can get really realistic stuff right now, but you have to build them for the uh, higher end more computer based, uh, uh, hardware, right. but, uh, where the technology is at right now, it's a really, really good yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. The, even the, the, you know, just interacting in the environment was really cool in that, you know, you can 
go grab those things and move around and stuff like that. But then also having, you know, Boris was my instructor in, in this scenario and being able to actually talk through these things in real time is, is yeah. really cool because he's, where is he at? In Bogota, in Colombia. Yeah, in Colombia. Yeah. And so I'm talking to somebody in Colombia in the cockpit of a virtual 737. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for uh, for coming over and letting me play with this stuff. It was yeah. really cool to to check this out. It's it's awesome to see you know what you guys are doing, thank you. Uh, both with technology and how we're bringing it to you know the younger generation and and what it's doing to solve some of the workforce problems for for our industry. So I'm really excited to see where this all goes and appreciate you guys coming. Um, for anybody who's watching, you know, where, where can they find you guys? So the name of our company is Xenial Digital. Yep. That's X-E-N-N-I-A-L. Uh, so XenialDigital.com and uh, does the same thing on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, LinkedIn, yeah. on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. I think the YouTube channel is really cool because we have probably like over 60 videos of the stuff yeah. that we're doing. Uh, but that's where they can find us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sean. Yep. Sean Galligan. Um, my website is aviation workforce solutions.com. Pretty simple. Okay. Um, emails the same thing. Sean at aviation workforce solutions or best way to get me LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, Sean Galligan. Um, I'm on there as well. Look forward to talking to anyone that's, um, interested in solving the workforce issues. Sweet. And we'll post links to all those things Thank in you. the, in the description, but Great having you guys on. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for making the drive over. Yeah, no, thank you Our guys pleasure. for uh, giving us the space. Yeah, yeah, really appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Have a great